Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, everybody. It is week 16 in the NFL, and we have this week and next week, and then that concludes the regular season, and then we're on to postseason action. A lot of things going to be wrapped up here in the final two weeks, including the first game of this week, the first NFL game played on a Friday since week 16 of 2009, when the Minnesota Vikings at 6-8 and eight play the New Orleans Saints at 10-4. and four. Saints win this game, they clinch the NFC South. If they lose, the door is still open for Tampa Bay. And I'm going to go with the Saints in this game. They are the all-around better unit. Uh, Minnesota, they like to play spoiler, though, especially against the Saints. As we know from years past, the, the Vikings play the Saints especially hard when the lights are bright. So, I'm not ruling out a Minnesota victory on Christmas Day, but I will still give the game to New Orleans. Then on Saturday... At 1 p.m., the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 9 and 5 will take on the Detroit Lions at. F- Excuse me, I said the Buccaneers were 5 and. I don't know what I said. Buccaneers are 9 and 5. Detroit is 5 and 9. Tampa Bay can clinch their first playoff berth since 2007 with a win. The last time they were in the playoffs, they got eliminated by the eventual Super Bowl champion New York Giants. How would I know that? I have no idea. It's not like I'm a diehard Giants fan or anything. But uh, Tampa Bay is going to win this game. Detroit, for all the positive strides that they make, they're just not a good football team at this juncture. They've got a lot of work to do, uh, and it's going to have to start next season when they find a new head coach. And right now, Tampa Bay is the better team they will win on Saturday. Then at 4.30 on Saturday, the San Francisco 49ers at 5-9 take on the 8-6 Cardinals. Arizona's won 9 of their last 11 versus San Francisco. I expect that to continue. Arizona is just all around the better unit. I mean, uh, Kyler Murray is the best quarterback in the matchup. They have explosive weapons. They got Larry Fitzgerald, DeAndre Hopkins, Christian Kirk. It is a good football team as Arizona. San Francisco, they're still trying to find their way. They're going to get George Kittle back. I don't know what Jimmy Garoppolo's status is for tomorrow. Uh, I'm guessing he's not going to play, but getting Kittle back is a big and important thing. I don't know why they would play him right now. They're not going to make the playoffs, so it would just be wise to sit your your very injured star players and prevent them from being hurt again. So I'm going to pick Arizona in this game. It's a must-win for them if they want to keep pace uh, in the wild card spots in the NFC. Then at 8:15, the 9 and 5 Dolphins play the 7 and 7 Raiders. Vegas is allowing 30.1 points per game this season. That is the most for them since 1961. That is insane. And you got to think if you ax that number by half and Vegas allows only 15 per game, they're probably not 7-7. Seven and seven. They probably have a few more wins than they do currently. And they get a Dolphins team with Tua Tungavailoa that, um, that plays very hard and that knows they're in position to make the playoffs for, I believe, the first time since 2013 or 2015, I want to say. I could be wrong on that, but it was the year they got eliminated uh, when Matt Moore had to play because Ryan, uh, yeah, Ryan Tanhill got hurt. Uh, they got bumped by Pittsburgh. I, if I have all my eggs in line, I think that was what happened. So I'm going to pick Minnesota. Or, wow, I'm all over the place tonight. I'm going to pick Miami to win this game and continue their stride towards the playoff. Whew, that was a struggle. Then Sunday at 1 p.m., the Indianapolis Colts at 10 and 4 take on the 11 and 3 Steelers. Pittsburgh has won 13 of the last 15 versus Indianapolis, but Pittsburgh is on a slide. They just dropped one at uh, Baltimore or at <laughs> at Cincinnati. They lost to the Bengals in very embarrassing fashion. Juju Smith-Schuster danced on the Bengals logo before. The game started and proceeded to get rocked by Von Bell. And then Juju later issued a statement to where he said, for the betterment of the team, he would stop dancing on the logos. So Indy, you're safe from logo dancing. Go out there and win this game. Both teams need it 
at this point. The Steelers need it to keep the Browns away, and the Colts need it if they want to take the AFC South away from Tennessee, which is a not not, not it's not going to be a very easy task for them to accomplish. But they need a win versus Pittsburgh to do that. And that is my prediction. I'm going to go with Indianapolis in this game. Then the New York Giants at 5-9 and nine take on the 9-5 and five Ravens. Baltimore has a plus 116 point differential this season. That is second most in the NFL. I had no idea their point differential was that insane. Um, the Giants, they're 5-9. and nine. They're still not out of the NFC East uh, race, surprisingly. A win here, they get to 6-9. and nine. Then it, they're right back in the thick of things. But as a Giants fan, as much as I want to see us make the playoffs, because you never know what can happen, just stop. Just stop at this point. Like, I, I don't see us being able to beat Baltimore on a talent level. And then next week we have Dallas. So it's going to be two extremely hard games that are going to be needed to win in order to make uh, our, our spot in the playoffs. And right now we sit a game behind Washington, and this could be the game that we make up. But it is a very, very long journey to then, and I'm just not sold on this team being able to do it. Baltimore, they need a win here <laughs> to keep pace in the AFC wildcard race because now Baltimore is on the outside looking in. They've got Cleveland ahead of them, and they've got uh, Pittsburgh ahead of them. And that is a very rare thing to have a division so top-heavy. And Baltimore, they're going to be my pick. I picked them to win on Sunday. Then the Cincinnati Bengals at 3-10-1 take on the Houston Texans at 4-10. and Houston has won three straight versus Cincinnati, including Deshaun Watson's first ever career start where he went to Cincinnati and won and had an incredible long touchdown run in that game. Uh, to help give the Texans a win. So I'm going to pick Deshaun Watson and the Texans again. Uh, Texans are out of it, but hey, at least they can make it fun. Then the Browns at 10-4 and will take on the 1-13 Jets. Cleveland has won five of their last six, and New York has won one of their last one. Uh, don't rule out the Jets, man. They're getting hot. <laughs> so obviously the Jets are well out of playoff contention at this point, but they beat the Rams last week. Uh, they shocked the world. Can they do it again? I, I don't think so. I think Cleveland is just too good right now. They're, stri they're striding. They know that the division is within their grasp. And if they're able to come out and win this game, that could mean a potential AFC North crown this year. Not just playoffs, but the AFC North crown which would be absolutely insane. Baker beat the Jets in his first ever game action in the NFL. He replaced the injured uh, Tyrod Taylor in that game. Came back, beat the Jets. I think he's going to do it again. So they're my pick. Then the Chicago Bears at 7-7 seven and seven take on the 1-13 and 13 Jacksonville Jaguars. Jacksonville is allowing 30.2 points per game this season. That's the most in team history. The defense is not good. Bears offense hasn't been much better. But I like my odds with Chicago. They're going to be my pick. Then the 4-10 and Falcons take on the 13-1 and Chiefs. And Kansas City has won 22 of their last 23, including playoffs, including the Super Bowl. Uh, Kansas City is going to win this game. Atlanta, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Atlanta fans. I'm going with Kansas City. Then the 4-10 and ten Panthers take on the 6-8 and eight Washington football team. Carolina has lost 8 of their last 9 after starting 3-2. and two. And Washington currently holds the NFC East in their hands. If they win, they extend their lead. They can probably end up clinching in Week 17 uh, with a win here and a Giants loss and a uh, Eagles loss coupled with a win over... Philadelphia next week and a Giants vic a Giants loss against Dallas next week would clinch Washington the NFC East. Um, they're probably going to win. Well, let's backtrack. If Alex Smith is able to play, Washington will win. If not, 
I am going to go with the Panthers. So there's my official prediction. It can go either way, uh, depending on the starter at game time for Washington. Then the 5-9 and nine Broncos take on the 5-9 and nine Chargers. Denver has won four of their last five versus the Chargers. But L.A. last week, they did the impossible and won their first division game in, like, I don't even remember what the statistic was. It was, like, two full years, like two and a half years or something like that. Uh, I'm going with the Chargers. I absolutely love Justin Herbert. Everybody that listens to this knows that. I think that he's incredible. I think that offense is very good. Um, they're going to have a nice day against Denver. Drew Locke probably going to have a good game, but I don't think it's going to be enough to beat Justin Herbert and the Chargers. Then the Eagles and the Cowboys play. Dallas is allowing 30.9 points per game this season. That's most in team history. Uh, they are going to have a tough time against Jalen Hurts and the Eagles. I'm going to give this to Jalen Hurts and the Eagles. Then the Rams at 9-5 and five take on the Seahawks at 9-4. and four. So surprisingly, even with L.A. dropping a game to the New York Jets last week, the Rams still have a chance to take first place if they are able to beat Seattle. <laughs> that just blows my mind. Uh, I'm going to pick the Rams in this game. To me, they're the mo- even though they just lost to the New York Jets, they are the more complete and whole team. Seattle has a lot of question marks up and down the board, including the play of Russell Wilson. And he's been all over the place this season. He's been really good, and he's been really bad. And I'm just going to give it to the more consistent team, which has been the Rams. When the Rams look good, or when the Rams win, they look good consistently. And when they lose, they, for the most part, with a, with a couple of exceptions, look capable to win games, but then just fall short in certain areas, if that makes any sense. But I'm going to go with the Rams over the Seahawks. Then on Sunday Night Football, 8.20 p.m., the Tennessee Titans take on the Green Bay Packers, both teams averaging over 30 points per game this season. I'm the biggest Aaron Rodgers fan that's not a Green Bay Packers fan that you will find in the planet, on the planet, in the universe. But I just don't trust the Packers wide receivers to give Aaron Rodgers enough to beat this team Derrick Henry, I think, is going to run all over this Packers defense. And there is going to be nobody to stop him. So I'm going to pick uh, I'm going to pick the Titans in this game. Surprisingly, I'm going to pick them to, um, to start putting away the AFC South. So they're going to be my pick. Then Monday Night Football at 8-15. The Bills at 11-3 take on the Patriots at 6-8. Buffalo is 2-16 at Gillette Stadium in the Bill Belichick era. I expect that to go to 3 and 16 the bills they look unstoppable right now they look like the second best team in football behind kansas city and the patriots right now they got a lot of questions to figure out for the offseason best they can finish is eight and eight and that's just not gonna cut it that would be the worst finish they've had i believe under bill belichick which is just mind-blowing but um i'm gonna give it to the bills And that does it. Four straight days of NFL football. How many times have you been able to say that in your life? And for for me, this will be the fourth straight year where we're concluding a regular season. I know a couple of years ago, I I stumbled after Thanksgiving and I forgot. Didn't forget, but uh, I failed to upload a couple of videos. But I've I've been good since. And even before that, I was good. But that's what happens when when the Giants are bad. I kind of lose the kind of lose the ability to care about <laughs> about the rest of the league. And that 2017 year did uh, did a lot negative for me. I was in a real bad place then uh, mentally. So it, it didn't help that I was trying to do this weekly, and I just got out of it, and I couldn't couldn't will myself to do it. But luckily, here we are a couple of years later, and uh, I'm having the time of my life. I absolutely love making these videos every week. Uh, It's the highlight of my week to sit down and talk about football. Even though some of these videos I do come out and they're only like a minute long, two minutes long. Sometimes you just, you gotta, you gotta crunch one out. But then there are times like this where I'm sitting down for 15 minutes at a time and I'm just having, having a whale of a time talking about football. Even though I'm not going in depth or, or, you know, having great lengthy 
uh, debates that's going to come. Oh, excuse me, that's going to come in the post season. I'm going to try to get more of the uh, the lengthy videos with some in depth breakdown when the when there's not so many games going on all at once. But yeah, that'll do it for week 16. We've got one left after this, and then it's on to the playoffs. And I just personally, I know I can't wait. Can't wait to see who's going to be crowned the Corona Cup champion. Ladies and gentlemen, that'll do it for me, and I'll catch you all next week for the regular season finale.